Hello friends. In the present video, we are going to start a new chapter called Bearing Capacity. From gate exam point of view, from this chapter, we may get two marks question and also we may get the one mark question. So this is very, very important chapter coming to the gate exam point of view because in 99% of the cases, without a question from this chapter, gate paper will not be there. I can say in 99% of the cases. So you have to work hard for this chapter. Why? Because there are some terminologies. If you understand them, definitely we can apply in every case. If you simply by heart the formula, then that may not help you to achieve the marks in this chapter. So that's why please concentrate more on the terminology or the terms in the definitions or formula. Okay. Now let us start the topic. So in this chapter, we are going to study about the bearing capacity. What is mean by bearing capacity? So how can we say in a simple wording? It is nothing but a whatever the load of the structure that can be bear by the soil beneath the ground surface or else we can say beneath the foundation. Okay. So in this chapter, we are going to study about what is the bearing capacity or we will also find out up to how much load we can apply the load on the soil such that the soil will be in the safe condition. Understood? So, in this chapter, we will study about the bearing capacity of bearing capacity and also we will study about the allowable load applied on shallow foundation. Okay? In this chapter, we will only find out capacities are allowable loads only on the shallow foundation. Okay. Uh, I will get you now. I will come to you. What is meant by shallow foundation and all? So, before that, this is corresponding to the capacity of the soil and this one depending upon the external load acting on the structure. So, before moving on to understand what is meant by shallow foundation, First, we have to study about a failure of a structure. Suppose if your structure laid on a soil, when you will consider a failure of a structure in corresponding with the soil, not with respect to the elements like beams, columns, slabs, we are not talking about them. We are talking about a structure if it is constructed on a soil, when you will consider it as a failure with respect to the soil capacity. So there are two types of failures. One is because of failure due to shear, failure due to shear and second one is nothing but a failure due to failure due to excessive settlement. So whatever the structure you take, so these two are only the possible failures of a structure. That means the shear failure will occur on a structure if applied load or else load, well, simply I'll say it in a normal terms, okay? Simply I'll say that Applied loads act on the structure are greater than the load capacity of a soil. I think this is what a similar term. So in exam, they will not ask you the definitions. Only the thing is that you have to understand the terms. Then you can correctly pick the correct answer. So the shear failure will occur when, suppose if you are having a capacity of 100 kN, what if, if you apply 120, will it bear it? No, it will obviously fail. So 
if your applied loads are greater than the capacity of the soil then your structure will fail because of the shear and then come to the next failure failure due to excessive settlement let us say you have constructed a structure like this okay i am representing only beams and columns these are the footings footings also we'll see in the next chapter and this is our the ground surface so after the application of load on the structure let us imagine this support has moved to 10 1 cm 2 cm like that the building is moving in downward direction will you sit on that building even though your structure is safe but what is happens because of the increase in settlement we may have the fear that the structure is going to collapse so the load capacity should be within the limit and also the settlement should be within the limit then only we will consider a structure as a safe so why we are not sitting here if your excessive settlement happens then it is not serving the purpose not serving the purpose it is intended to that means the structure the failure in the structure is not happening but in our mind we may think that the structure is going to be collapsed if you think that will it serve the purpose no even though the structure is safe if your settlement is very very large then we will not use that building or we won't be in the building why because we may have a psychology feeling that the structure is going to be collapsed so this is what the psychology problem of our people okay even the structure is safe as because of the excess of settlement we may feel that it is going to be failure so if we think that means no one will sit in this building that means no one is using that building if no one is using that is also will consider it as a failure so whatever the structure you take if there is excessive loads or if there is a excessive settlement we will consider that as a failure okay now next we are talking about the shala foundation or let me tell you in brief okay deeply will go into the further chapters let us say there is a ground surface and you have constructed a footing like this by excavating a soil up to a depth of d okay so this is what the column and this is what about the footing and what is this this is what called the level of foundation so let us assume that this is width of the footing normally represented by b suppose if your depth okay or else you can say if your depth of the footing is less than or equal to the width of the footing then we can say it is a shallow foundation is it so as long as your depth of the footing is less than width of the foundation with or else we can say it is a width of the footing then we will consider it as a shallow the name itself represents shallow means what up to a little depth in further chapters we will also deal with the deep foundation the name itself deep that means we are going into a very large depth so in this chapter we are going to study about the capacity of the soil and also we'll study about the how much load we can apply on the foundation to be on the safe condition only in shallow foundation what are the types of footings and uh, which type of footing we have to select uh, that and all we will discuss in the next chapter that is called the shallow foundation but here we will talk about or we will find out allowable pressure what is the allowable capacity on the foundation on which foundation shallow foundation only i think uh, that's it about the bearing capacities of the shallow foundation introduction okay in further classes we will see what are the some technology technical terms that we will follow 
what are the methods we have to use to find out the bearing capacity what are the factors that will affect the bearing capacity and also we will see what are the tests that will conduct on the foundation to assess the bearing capacity of the soil and all, all those concepts we will study in the further classes okay thank you